How you doing? I'll give you two seconds to answer. Too quick? Sorry. I know you can't answer me until probably the end of today, so <laughs> that's how long it's going to take me to edit today's video, but <sighs> I can breathe because I have finally crossed off this item on my to-do list. First, let me greet you. Cheers, Toronto. Starbucks mug, and I'm drinking Korean Sejak green tea. I have finally got around to testing some methods on how to seal Dilutions ink sprays. And I'm quite happy. I think I found, uh, I just did this little pamphlet as a reference note. This is what you're gonna see uh, in the segment coming up next. But I've tried three methods and two of them are a keeper, one of them not really, um, just because the mixture that I was using had water in it. And of course, when you're talking dilutions, ink sprays with water, eh, 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 the two don't get along well. They should not be a couple because it's gonna end up in a divorce. So I will show you the results and how I did all that now. All right, let's do this. It's the big day. I have three cardstock or three watercolor paper that I have treated with dilutions. And I pulled out three medium that I'm gonna try today. I'm going to try the soft gel, the semi-gloss on the jelly plate. Then I have the airbrush medium, which I'm going to put in a pump like this. And I also have matte medium, which I'm going to mix with water and spray it. I got this idea from the Liquitex website. I'm gonna read up on it. I think it's one part me matte medium, one part water. And I'll try to see if it works also with the Golden products. The one thing I can see is that this is watercolor paper and it has texture. I am not sure if the gel medium went into all the texture, but that's okay. I'm just going to pick up whatever is left on my jelly plate. Oh, interesting. How cool. Okay, I brought back my jelly plate and I just sprayed with dilutions uh, for two reasons. A, um, I want to see if the lines won't get muddied uh, when I actually press it down on the jelly plate because what I just tried on with the purple and pink is just a bunch of colors all together. There were no defined lines, so I have no idea of knowing if the colors have moved or not. The second thing is because I was using watercolor paper and there's a lot of texture, I'm not entirely sure how well it's sealed through the nooks and crannies. So this is just soft, I think it's cartridge paper or maybe thinner. Anyway, so it was just like a, a big pack of paper that I bought for cheap. I'm gonna try it with that. So I went ahead and dried it. So let's do this once again. we're gonna be okay oh this is exciting guys <laughs> this is really exciting I mean the it the lines are not as sharp but I kind of have a feeling that it brought uh, brought up some of the little little specks that sometimes gets under the stencils but look at that I still have very clean lines. I have to show you. Um, I just pulled up, I tried to pull up another imprint from the plate. And as you can see this time around, I did not get any color. So obviously it has to do with the paper. My first paper was watercolor paper and I got a second print out of it. So some of that color was left on the plate. Whereas when I used a regular paper, it is smooth and I have nothing at all, no color.
Here we are with the airbrush medium. I have no idea if this is going to clog up the nozzle. It's very clear as you can see. And here we go. Okay, we'll let that dry. It's one part distilled water, one part met medium. I have filled up my bottle to the halfway point and I guess I can use, um, I'm gonna use this palette knife to, oh, it's gonna take a while. Uh, let's see if I can do this properly. Oh boy. That is scary, folks. <laughs> but I did it. Let's shake this up. I'm a bit skeptical about this, but apparently it works. It's from the Liquitex website. Uh, maybe Liquitex products is different. I don't know. We'll try with the golden because that's what I have. It doesn't apply the same way. Um, it gives it a bumpy texture for now, anyways. Okay, so all the pieces are dry. I'm going to use the um, Uni Posca or Posca, I don't know how you pronounce that, uh, pen. It's a white paint pen. So I'm gonna doodle over these two pieces. And I'm also going to apply some light molding paste because part of the reason why I would love for to be able to seal the dilutions is so that I can add texture over that. So I'm going to first try doodling and I think I'm going to use, I'm just gonna try like something very basic. I'm gonna let that settle for a little bit and we'll see if um, I start seeing the dilution seeping through that. On this one here, I'm just going to do it off on the inside here. Now I'm gonna use the light molding paste on both of these pieces. measure I'm going to drop a few drops <laughs> of this um, high flow paint for the sake of comparison I prepped another a uh, piece of cardstock with some dilution sprays on it and I'm not going to seal it I just want to see how the different um, media that I took for the other ones will react to an unsealed uh, surface just so that we can compare already I have some blue at the tip of my marker Okay, so everything is pretty much dry. This is the piece that was not sealed. By the way, I added um, titanium white acrylic paint to all the pieces off camera. Now, the one thing that I'm quite impressed with is the high flow paint that was added by uh, Drops did not really pick up the color. I mean, it, it did a little bit, but not much. The paint, yes, the paint uh, turned uh, into a baby blue. I know because I applied it with my fingers and um, it picked up. And of course the pen did react because I know I had some blue uh, at the tip of the felt. Here's the first piece that I did using soft gel on a jelly printing plate. I have no bleeding through the fiber paste. The fiber paste does not dry completely opaque so that is why you're seeing some of the colors showing through underneath here. The high flow. 
um, you can see it the high flow paints are not uh, opaque they're transparent so of course you're going to see some of that color here uh, this is titanium white fluid paint again not completely opaque but at least when I was rubbing the paint I did not drag the blue into the green so it looks like it's sealed pretty well I'm also going to show you on the watercolor paper and um, you can see that the white dots uh, did not pick up any color again this is the high flow which is uh, transparent by nature so I I don't have um, purple bleeding into that paint at all this is the paint pen uh, I don't think there's a problem either there and this is the titanium white paint now on the titanium white you can see here I drag some of that color now why did I dry the color probably because this is watercolor paper and you can see nooks and crannies I don't know if I move the camera you'll be able to see the, to see the texture so my guess is in some of the indentations um, the matte gel did not or the soft gel did not reach those parts and that's why I was I was bringing up some of that color but here none next I did the airbrush medium and I think out of the three this is the one I love the most so this is on watercolor paper I dragged some of that paint nothing came off my fingers uh, this is the paste it doesn't seem to have any bleed through at all in fact in a lot of places where the paste was thicker it's almost white and when I wrote with the the uh, paint pen no bleeding whatsoever and this is the high flow now the high flow I'm noticing some discoloration in some areas that I might have been because I did not brush properly in one area maybe I don't know but um, I love this for the convenience of uh, being enabled to spray in a journal the other piece is just regular paper again no bleeding whatsoever the paste did not drag anything into the other parts it's just transparent so we're able to see what's underneath the paint as well nothing was dragged pretty cool so this is the airbrush system and it sprays beautifully it's very very liquidy the last one I want to show you is the matte medium mixed with water when you spray it does react as you can see here on the pattern um, I have some of that green bleeding through and that's probably because in the mixture of the matte medium uh, there's water you need to add water with the matte medium so of course as soon as you talk water it's going to be reacting with the dilutions inks but I mean once it's dry I kind of have a feeling that it's totally sealed On the watercolor paper, again, I don't notice anything significant. This is a little bit orangey. You can see like a faint discoloration, but I think it's because, again, the high flow is transparent. The paste, I don't think nothing was dragged. Even here, look, this is over red. Red dilutions. And because this part here is thicker, it's more opaque and we don't see the red through it didn't become a red red so this is the paint golden titanium white that i added with my fingers and uh, i did not drag any color from one color to the uh, to the other so if i'm bringing back the unsealed piece you'll be able to see the difference this writing over red and orange is a lot uh crisper then this one here this is totally baby blue same with the paint the paint that I added became baby blue this is white with a reflection of the red underneath if that makes any sense this is how I see it okay so just to recap this is the gel printing with the soft gel this is um, pretty much a complete seal the only problem is the inconvenience of taking your journal and flipping it onto a jelly printing plate. 
but if you're working on paper that's not such a big deal then we have the matte medium mixed with water this one I would hesitate to use it just because I've had some bleeding uh, through the stencil and here actually I can show you the difference between the two so as you can see here this is the same piece of paper I did originally when I stenciled this uh, paper was just one large piece of paper and you can see the difference between this and this you can see that some of the lines some of the color has bled through while I was spraying the uh, the matte medium with the water and that again is because um, there's water in the mixture so I would probably not use matte medium as a sealer that's my take on this I think my favorite especially for our journaling is the airbrush medium I have my pump here I have not used it since I uh, made it this was probably oh I would say five six hours ago and I just want to see if it locked the um, the nozzle nope it did not it still sprays beautifully so that's another plus I was afraid that the pump might clog up but it didn't so that is the conclusion I'm so glad that I got to do this test and I hope that this was helpful to you guys if you know of any other method that we can use to seal the uh, amazing dilutions which I like the fact that they react to water this was not the object of this test I like them so much that I like to use them as a base because they spray beautifully but sometimes you want to add to it and you don't necessarily want to have your colors mixing together with whatever you're adding on top so that is why I was on the, um, the hunt for the perfect solution to seal dilutions but I will also use them with water because they can do some pretty darn cool things Oh, I'm so happy I was able to do this. <sighs> so glad about the results. It's so exciting. Finally found a way uh, to almost perfectly seal dilutions in ink sprays. I've kept the pages that I've done just as a reference and I've also marked in the back uh, what they were about. If you want to go ahead and do uh, some experimenting on your on your own I strongly suggest that you do that because it's something that you can keep as a reference and um, there's nothing like trying out for yourself. Uh, of course I'm not an expert on the matter. If you have any other methods and you have tried them let me know please and I will do some more testing. The one that I think I will use most often is with the airbrush medium. Little side note on this, Golden has discontinued their airbrush paint I believe when they introduced the high flow. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that they won't discontinue the airbrush medium and if they do maybe they will come out with an air uh, airflow high flow medium fingers crossed but let's not worry about that for now because this works really great Done. the other thing I wanted to show you very quickly and another thing that I'm quite proud of is my first finished journal now this is a small book that you've never seen and the reason is that this was the very first uh, my very first experiences as an art journaler and that started I've written the uh, timeline of this book it started on April 12th 2008 the funny thing about this book is that I had started on the back by mistake and upside down <laughs> So, and every single page is not in chronological order. I just went with the flow. I did one page here and there very sporadically. And I have to admit that most of it is stuff that I was venting about. So, of course, there's a lot of writing. And because this book is so personal to me, of course, I'm not going to show you individual pages, but there is one that I can share with you. And here's the backstory. I've always had in my dreams that one day I would end up in a loft in Old Montreal, right facing the water, uh, the water, <laughs> right facing the water, uh, uh, facing the old port. And I have, I have a plan. I have the whole 
uh, layout of this loft in my head. And in my head, I have the complete layout of this loft and how it should look. It's really funny. And I've had this in my head for a long, long time. In January 2012, I decided to actually sketch the layout in that book. And I'm not going to show you the sketch because it's made with lead pencil. It probably won't pick up, uh, be picked up by the camera. But I can show you the other side of this, which is... Um, mind frame, yeah. This is a view of me looking out of my ideal studio onto the water and you can see the exposed brick wall and everything it's so funny so this this was um, this book was kind of like my go-to book when I needed to vent or when I had something that I absolutely needed to put down and this was way before I got into art journaling very heavily which is so cool I love to look back at it I love to see how much I have progressed and I think keeping a journal is very important and it's a practice that I'm going to keep moving forward now this was started in 2008 so obviously I did not journal every day because I just finished it the other day but um, nevertheless, it's interesting to keep. And I can also share the, um, the front page, which was done very, very quickly with Inktense pencils. I just essentially uh, put down some color and then decided that this would be a little hill with a tree. And I just wrote my first art journal. I just want to leave you on um, something that Jane Davenport shared during her Frolicaholics online class, which I am attending, she says, don't talk back about your artwork. It gives your inner uh, critic strength and power, and we don't want that. And it's so true. Tame that beast. Tame that inner critic beast. And lately, I have to say, last week and also this week, I have had to really, really go back to that quote. I have finished a canvas for the store that I was not entirely proud of and I debated should I start all over again and all that and I fought with my inner critic so badly that I was drained and but by the end of the day I concluded that I needed to let it go and it will happen again I know because we're all stumbling through this we have some hit and misses and that's what makes us human but tame that beast the inner critics gotta go also i want to mention that from now until i move into my new place which will happen in august i will not be able to to vlog uh more than once a week it, to shoot for more is unrealistic on my part because i still have to perch pack build a studio at the other end because what I have here does not fit into that small space. I need to buy furniture also because my furniture is too big and I have to buy a car. Everything is happening all at once so once a week is the most that I can do. And, um, I guess I'll talk to you next week so in the meantime if you have any questions or comments leave them below. If you like this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and I will see you later. Bye!